This is going to be lecture 8 using a handheld refractometer to measure coffee solids. And this video starts with a, or this uh, lecture outline starts with a video. I'm going to share my screen here and show the video. And what you want to do on your first page is describe what happens in the video and why. I'll show the video first. Oh, apparently I won't. Try that. Let's watch it again. And I don't know if I can do this actually. So, there's enough of me anyway. So here's what we're going to be doing. On the left is a glass of water. On the right is a glass of corn oil. I'm taking a stir rod and sticking it first into the water. And nothing unusual. It looks just like you would expect. And then when I place it into the corn oil, it appears to disappear. And uh, the reason, the why behind this, so the, the what happened is that the stirring rod disappeared when I placed it into the corn oil. And the why is that the uh, stirring rod and the corn oil have exactly the same index of refraction, which is also called the refractive index. When you place two things that have exactly the same refractive index uh, if the one and the other, you can't see them because what we are actually seeing when we see the boundary between, let's say, this water and the air or the water and the glass uh, or the water and the stir rod is we're actually seeing uh, differences in refractive index, differences in index of refraction. And, whoa, always freaks me out. Uh, and good uh, to think about uh, for any Halloween pranks, although I have yet to implement one based on this. Um, but uh, we're going to be talking all about what is a handheld refractometer and why we are using it for coffee. And this is going to be a lot of information about uh, what is refraction and what we're doing. So I can go ahead and stop sharing now. And let's get back to... what we're talking about today. And before we talk about refraction, we're going to talk about something called the speed of light. And what is the speed of light? Well, it is the speed at which light travels. And light travels, and this is, you can think of uh, Roy G. Biv, which are the colors of the rainbow, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet colors of the rainbow, that's light, but it also turns out that other kinds of light, or what we might call electromagnetic radiation, also travel at the same speed. You might have heard of UV, ultraviolet, also travels at the same speed. You may have heard of infrared, which uh, if you've ever used night vision goggles or heat sensitive goggles, those are looking at the infrared wavelengths. Uh, X-rays, gamma rays, radio waves, cell phone signals, they all travel at the speed of light. And uh, in a vacuum, no particles, no atoms, no ions, nothing. The speed of light, and I have to look at what it is, is 299,792,458 meters per second. Wow, that's fast. And that's a lot of significant figures. We have figured this number out very well. We in the science sense, not me. Um, but then if you're in air, which has very low density and has a low number of particles per volume, it turns out that it's 
702,547 meters per second. So, well, let's see, first four digits are the same. The fifth digit is significantly different. And the reason that in air, light, on all of these kinds of uh, light uh, travel slower is because the light interacts with the electrons in the particles. and slows down. These interaction slow down the light regardless of what kind it is. More particles means more slowing down. If we're doing water, in water the speed of light is, up, uh, well we don't have as many digits here, 224 million, nine, oh yeah we do, 569 meters per second because water is more dense, so uh, it, it has more electrons, and those electrons cause the uh, light to slow down. And these are very large numbers, and what scientists did is they developed this thing called the refractive index, and we call it N sub D typically, lowercase n, capital D as a subscript. That's how you'll be referring to it. So the refractive index, also called the index of refraction, and it doesn't have to be capitalized, I don't know why I did, but I did. Uh, but either of these terms or the symbol ND all mean the same thing. It is the ratio of the speed of light in a vacuum. Oop, I don't have to write ratio because I'm gonna make it a ratio. Speed of light in vacuum divided by speed of light in a material. And since we're interested in uh, substances like coffee that we are around every day, uh, what we can then do is say uh, coffee is a water-based beverage. Let's do the refractive index for water. And then from there, we'll move on to thinking about coffee. So the speed of light in a vacuum, all of these digits up here, 299,792,458 meters per second over the water number, 224, 900, 569 meters per second. And if I do this, 299, 792, 458, divided by 224, 900, 569, I get 1.33299998 which is typically rounded to, and this is the number we'll use for it, 1.3330. Yes, that's five digits. We know this pretty well. And we could go more, but we're gonna stick to that because that's how many digits the handheld refractometer can measure it to, as we will see. So that's a little bit about the speed of light and what is the refractive index. Now let's talk a little bit more about what is refraction. And you've seen the videos for this class already, so you know a little bit, but we want to review this. Uh, if you have um, two materials, and those are air and water, and what you can then do is you can have what's called a normal, and all a normal line is is a line that's perpendicular to the uh, interface. So this is the air-water interface that we're talking about. And then if you have a ray of light, as it goes from air to water, the light bends. So refraction is the bending of light.
as it goes from one medium or one material to another. And uh, so you probably can see that as you go from, uh, if you put a spoon or a material, I thought I had a spoon around here, let's see. Yes, there's my spoon. <coughs> if you put a spoon in water, the spoon looks bent as it goes into the water. If you wear glasses, then the, as the light goes through the glass, and glasses are usually have slight curvature to them. There is refraction going on as the light goes through the lenses. And uh, so that's what refraction is. And right, we're going to define a couple more things about this picture. Uh, first, this angle is going to be the angle of incidence. And we're going to call that uh, theta sub a. So, whoop theta sub a is the angle of incidence and that's the angle that the light is coming into the surface with and then down here we're going to call it theta b where theta, by the way, sorry I didn't say this, is the lowercase Greek letter uh, theta. So I think it's lowercase. So this is going to be theta B is the angle of refraction. And because water has an index of refraction of 1.3330, while air equals 1.0003, the larger refractive index will bend or refract the light towards the normal. So larger refractive index bends the light closer to the normal. And if we were to do this, let's say, backwards, or let's say this, two materials this time, and the top one is going to be uh, oil. Corn oil is a good one, too. Uh, so ND for corn oil is 1.48, and we have water down here. So now, um, the substance that has the higher refractive index is on top. Substance with the lower refractive index is on the bottom. And the light bends away from the normal. And again, we would still call this theta A, the light's coming from the corn oil first. Theta B uh, is where it's going through. Theta B is the angle of refraction. So, and this is just how we draw these pictures, where you think about where the light starts and where it ends up. And of course, if you have a glass, piece of glass, and you have corn oil, where the refractive indices are exactly the same, the light just continues to go straight and there's nothing to see. There's no bending, there's no interface. And so it's interesting to think about in that video how if you can match the refractive index for two materials, then things will appear invisible. Now, uh, next let's talk about what is Snell's law. And Snell's Law takes that same picture where we have 
uh, let's say material one with n one and material two and I guess yeah n two oh I think I call them n d one and n d two and uh, so as we go Theta A, theta B. So sort of the same picture I just drew. What um, Snell's law says is that the index of refraction for the first material times the sine of theta A, so the angle of incidence, equals the index of refraction for material two times sine of theta b, oop, lowercase b, lowercase b, b. Um, let's do lowercase. So uh, what you can then do is, and this is exactly uh, similar to what we're going to be doing with our refractometer. So we are going to be interested in the refractive index of coffee. Uh, which will be your unknown, and uh, but we will know, uh, or the refractometer, the handheld refractometer, will know the refractive index of the air. Uh, we will know the angle of incidence. We will know the, uh, or you know, it's all calibrated within the instrument to know the angle of refraction, and so we'll be able to more or less solve this well. If I'm going to solve it for nd2, I'm going to need to divide both sides by sine of theta b. So nd1 sine theta a over sine of theta b. And sine is a button on your calculator. Um, when you do uh, your calculator with this, you're going to see the sine button right there. You can see sine to the minus 1. And it's going to be important to have degrees. I don't know if you can see that. It says DEG. That way the angles can be in degrees. So your calculator, uh, calculator. Um, and go ahead and do this. So uh, if it's in degrees, so how about mode one, mode two? I'm trying to find my button here for degrees to anything else. Mm, we'll work on that too. But let's say you want to know sine of 30 degrees. I So a lot of calculators you have to type the sine button first. On my calculator you type the 30 degrees and then you hit the sine button. And sine will be 0 0.5. Sine of 30 degrees will be 0 0.5. Um, let's see, well, again, I'll work on how to get, make sure that your calculator is in degrees, because otherwise it's going to be hard, but we'll work it out. Um, so that's Snell's Law, and that's where we're going to end this video.